We've come here to show you how to assess thermal environment in an indoor environment. We're using an indoor climate analyzer which has a series of probes which you can see there for measuring um, radiant heat, humidity, air temperature and air movement. It is also possible to measure uh, surface temperature as well with this instrument. In the background you can see there are blinds closed against windows uh, there's very bright sunlight out there today and we will be able to look at the impact of that sunlight both on the blinds and when the blinds are raised. This is the indoor climate analyzer meter. Um, at the moment it's set up to uh, display the air temperature that's being recorded by the air temperature probe. This is indoor 27.4 degrees centigrade. It's close to midday on a sunny day but we have the blinds shut. The um, air velocity, the air movement in the room, it's 0.04 metres per second. On the right hand side is a running average, 0.02 metres per second. So not very much air movement currently here. The meter is now displaying the relative humidity at 67%. That's above the sort of approximate comfort range of 40 to 60% that you might expect for an office environment. Um, and if we look at the dew point, we can see that's 20.6 degrees centigrade. So that means at that temperature, water will condense out and you will get droplets forming. This is displaying the uh, radiant temperature. You've got two readings there, A and B. A is the temperature that's pointing towards the hot surface of the window where the sun shines there and that's recording a higher temperature than the B surface which is pointing into the room and you'll see that the B temperature is in fact close to the air temperature that we looked at a few moments ago. This is also looking at uh, the radiant heat and information from the probe from the two surfaces displaying on the uh, left hand side the A surface which is close to the window that is the amount of radiant heat uh, being received by that surface, 489 watts per square meter, whereas on the B surface there's only 460 watts per square meter of surface. So there's quite a difference there between the two. We've now opened the blinds so the sunlight is able to come into the room and we're now again looking at the radiant temperature and you can see there's a much larger difference between the A surface which is facing the window and the B surface which is facing into the room. The B surface is still close to the room temperature that we recorded before, but the A surface has gone up to over 39 degrees centigrade. This difference in uh, radiant heat now that we've got um, direct sunlight coming through the windows is also reflected in the radiant heat energy on the two surfaces. You can see that the uh, radiant heat on the A surface has gone up considerably over the value that we had before, whereas the B value is fairly close to what we had um, previously with blind shut. This is the air temperature in the room. It hasn't gone up very much and it will take quite some considerable time for it to go up because we're actually making a measurement in a large classroom uh, with a large volume of air in here. But you can see that the air temperature is starting to go up. But, um, the radiant heat has, is a big contributor now to the thermal load. We've turned air conditioning on in the room and we've closed the blinds again. Um, this uh, was only done about five minutes ago, but already you can see an impact on the air temperature. We're now, it's changing a little bit because of the uh, environment with the air conditioner on, but it's now around 23 and a half degrees centigrade. With the air conditioner on, you can see now the air movement, the air velocity, and it's gone up considerably, so we're now uh, an, an average of 0.27 uh, meters per second, which is really good for uh, general indoor comfort. The relative humidity is increased. This is because we're actually cooling the air in the room, and that's a natural consequence of that. This is the radiant temperature again, and now you can see that we've got the blinds closed. We've gone back to a similar temperature difference between the A and B surfaces that we had at the beginning. 29.7 for the A and 26 for the B.
We're going to demonstrate thermal environmental assessment in the kitchen in the university. It's the middle of the day, there's a lot of food preparation going on. You can see the WBGT heat stress apparatus. It's actually positioned on top of an oven uh, because we're just trying to get some uh, indications of the hot areas in the kitchen. Clearly where it's positioned is not where somebody actually works. So um, if you were assessing an individual's heat stress environment, you obviously wouldn't position it right there. This is the apparatus for measuring heat stress, the WBGT index. You can see on the left hand side the black globe thermometer which is measuring radiant heat. In the middle is a wet bulb thermometer uh, which is factoring in both humidity and air movement and on the right hand side is the dry bulb air temperature reading. Currently on display are the wet and dry bulb temperatures. You can see there's a difference. The dry bulb temperature here in the kitchen at the moment is 29.4 degrees centigrade. The wet bulb is 23.1, um, indicating that uh, it's not definitely not 100% humidity in here. There is a uh, difference in temperature. This is the black globe temperature, so this is measuring radiant heat and that is 29.3 degrees centigrade. The display is now showing the WBGT index. On the top is the inside WBGT index. You will note from the module that there is a different formula for calculating WBGT depending on whether it's an indoor environment. In this case, in the kitchen, it is an indoor environment, so the top indoor value uh, is the one that we should focus on, and that is 25 degrees centigrade. At 25 degrees centigrade, that is right on the border of the action level for um, a moderate amount of work. In kitchen work would probably be between light and moderate levels of work, and the 25 degrees is an action le level, not actually the exposure level. This is an anemometer which is capable of measuring fairly low um, airflow rates and what we're doing at the moment in the kitchen area is measuring the airflow rate in the area where the uh, worker is assembling the um, burgers. It's an American instrument so it's actually measuring it in um, feet per minute but roughly speaking we can convert that to meters per second and it, it's about 0.1 of a metre per second, so fairly low flow rate, but um, not too bad, and it is quite variable, um, and there are plenty of open doors, as well as the fans in, in the kitchen. Here we're measuring the airspeed in an outdoor environment, in fact just outside the kitchen where we're in before, just to show the um, variability of air movement when you've got natural air movement from breeze and wind. And when it's at the 200 feet per second, of feet per minute, that approximates to about a metre per second. So considerably more air movement out here than there was in the kitchen. This is a whirling psychrometer. It contains two uh, thermometers. One is a dry bulb thermometer. The other has a wick around it to wet it, which is the wet bulb thermometer. When conditions are dry, the wet bulb thermometer cools the mercury more as air movement um, evaporates the water and cools the uh, mercury in the thermometer. So the wet bulb records uh, a different temperature from the dry bulb. In very humid conditions, if it's rainy, both bulbs will actually be wet so they will record the same temperature. So we can use the difference in temperature between the two thermometers to have a measure of humidity. The psychrometer is whirled um, until the temperatures in the two thermometers stabilise. 
The two temperatures are different on the two thermometers. The dry temperature thermometer is reading 27 degrees centigrade and the wet bulb is reading 23 degrees centigrade. That difference is a reflection of the humidity and we can actually look up the percentage of humidity in a psychrometer chart which is provided in your module. This is a small anemometer which is using air movement to move veins, veins much like a windmill and recording the air movement in um, meters per second. Um, it, we also have the temperature, the air temperature displayed below it so currently the air movement is 0.9 meters per second and the uh, air temperature is around 27.5 degrees centigrade.